Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on understanding and calculating sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy using Microsoft Excel. Oftentimes in counseling research, we develop instruments, diagnostic instruments, screening instruments, to detect the presence of mental health disorders. And we want some way to evaluate these instruments so that we can know how useful the instruments will be and that we can be aware of the potential benefits and potential risks associated with an instrument. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded into Excel, I have a column test result and it's binary, it's positive or negative, and then I have a column named reality which also has two possible outcomes, positive and negative. So let's say that we're developing an instrument, let's say it's a screening instrument, that's designed to detect generalized anxiety disorder. And we have here in the reality column the results from the gold standard for determining disorder. Say an instrument that is highly accurate and a clinical interview that is detailed, but we believe that the results that we see here in the reality column are actually telling us whether the disorder is present or not. So if it's present, it'll return positive, and if it's not, it'll return negative. For the instrument that we're testing, we don't know. We believe that the instrument is accurate. We believe that when it records positive, that the participant has a disorder and it records negative, they do not. But we need to test it against a more accurate, accepted and approved method. In this case, I just named that reality. So you can see when we combine the reality variable with the test result variable, that we have four possible permutations. The positive, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative, and negative, positive. So for the first permutation, we have positive, positive. So the test result indicates a disorder, and in reality, there is a disorder. We refer to this as a true positive. In the next case here, we have a negative prediction, a negative test result, a negative reality, right? So no disorder predicted, no disorder present, that's what we refer to as a true negative. So for these first two outcomes, both of these are true. We have true positive and true negative. Next we have a positive then a negative. So we have a positive prediction. The test predicted the disorder was there. However, in reality, it was not there. We refer to this as a false positive. False positive also represents a type 1 error and is sometimes referred to as a false alarm. And the last possible outcome is a negative test result when in reality the disorder was there. We have a positive outcome for the reality variable. This is referred to as a false negative. False negative is also known as type 2 error and is sometimes referred to as a miss. So these represent the four possible outcomes of comparing a dichotomous test result to a dichotomous reality variable. Right, you have a true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative. So I want to show you how I designed the function that returns the true positive, true negative, false positive, or false negative. I use what's referred to as nested if statements. So if I go here to the function tab, you can see this is the function that I used. And I was able to get this to appear this way by putting an apostrophe in front of the equal sign. That's why it's not coming up as a function, but rather as text. So taking a look at this function, you can see it starts with an if statement. 
and then an AND statement. So in this case, if A3 is positive, and going back here to data, this is A3, and this is B3. So it was taken, this particular function was taken from this cell, from the C3 cell. So if A3, the test result, and B3, uh, the reality are both positive. If that's true, you have true positive. If not, we go to the next if statement. That evaluates if the test result was positive and the reality was negative. If that is the case, then it's a false positive. If not, it goes to another if statement uh, where the test result's negative and the reality is positive. If that's true, it's a false negative. If it's not, it's a true negative because that would be the only option left. So we have four possible outcomes, so we only need three if functions. Moving back to data. So if I were to change one of these, like say we're going to change this uh, true positive, and I wanted to make this a false negative, so I type in negative here, you can see that it dynamically uh, of course changes this function will update and dynamically change the result here but also the formatting has changed and that's because I've applied conditional formatting to the range C2 through C51 so I have 50 observations here so I want to show you how I conditionally format this go into conditional formatting and manage rules. I'll go to this worksheet. You can see I have two rules here. And I'll go and take a look at this uh, false positive and false negative rule first. You can see I set this to format only cells that contain. Then for format only cells with, it's specific text that was selected containing the word false. So if the word false appears in the text, it's going to format with this gray background and the font color is red. Taking a look at the other rule that formats the values that have the word true in them, I did the same thing, format only cells that contain specific text containing the word true, and I went with a black format for the fill and a green font color. So now let's take a look at sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy. So before we calculate sensitivity, we need some values. And the same thing for specificity and accuracy. And over here in equations, I have the equations for sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy. I've also added positive predictive value and negative predictive value. So sensitivity is equal to the true positive count, the number of true positives, divided by the number of true positives plus false negatives. Specificity is the number of true negatives divided by the number of true negatives plus false positives. Positive predicted value is the same as sensitivity except for for the last argument here instead of false negative it's false positive and negative predictive value is the same as specificity except for for the last argument instead of false positive it's false negative and then for accuracy you add all the true positives and true negatives together and divide that by the uh, entire population which would be true positive true negative, false positive, and false negative. So moving back to the data worksheet, we can see that we're going to need the counts for true positive and false negative as well as true negative and false positive in order to make the calculations necessary for sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy. So for true positive, I used a count if function here. I'm going to reproduce this function in column G. So it starts off with equal sign. 
then count if, and then I want the range, and that'll be C2 through C51. And here I'm going to hit F4 to make this an absolute reference. And then for criteria, I'm going to go back to E3, which is true positive. That'll give me the true positive count. Now I can autofill this down since so I made that an absolute reference, and it'll return the false negative because it'll update the E3 to E4. So true positive, it'll move from true positive to false negative but it won't change the range because I used the F4 key and made that an absolute reference. So it's still C2 through C51. And similarly, I could control C, copy this, and move down to the true negative and paste. It'll return the right value and I can autofill down and it'll return the right value there too. So for true negative and false positive, it'll return the correct value because I've locked that range as an absolute reference. So taking a look at the equation, again, for sensitivity, you see it's true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. So for sensitivity, I'll move over one to the right to G. It'll be the true positive count a forward slash for divided by, and parentheses, the true positive count again, plus the false negative value, and enter. And you can see this 0.86, uh, which is the same as 86%. If I wanted this formatted, I could format it in the number area there under the Home tab. So that's how we calculate sensitivity. As you can see by the equation, sensitivity is the proportion of true positives that the screening test has correctly identified. In this case, almost 87 percent. Now specificity is the proportion of true negatives that the screening test correctly identified. And it's calculated by taking equal sign and then the true negative count divided by true negative plus false positive. And again, I can make the adjustment so that it looks the same as the uh, other value here. It's formatted the same as the percent in the F column here. And then we can see for accuracy and again, we saw the equation for accuracy over here. All the true findings divided by the population of findings. This will be equal sign. And then we'll take the true values, add them together. So that would be the true positives, F3, plus true negatives, which is F7. And divide that by all the counts. So again, the true counts, so I'll put those in, true positive plus true negative, but I'm also going to add false negative and false positive. Again, if I format this, you can see it's 78 percent. So accuracy is the proportion of true results, both the true positive and true negative results. So this actually gives us quite a bit of information about this diagnostic test, if these results were real results. You can see that in this particular case, for this instrument, the sensitivity would be higher than the specificity. So if this were a real instrument, it would do a better job at predicting a positive result when in reality there was a positive result than it would in predicting a negative result when in reality there was a negative result. And of course the opposite would be true if it had higher specificity than sensitivity. But in this case, 
this instrument is more sensitive than it is specific. A highly sensitive test is going to have a low proportion of false negatives. So there will not be many cases where a highly sensitive instrument returns a negative result when in fact in reality there was a positive result. Whereas an instrument with high specificity is going to have a low proportion of false positives. There won't be many instances where it returns a positive result when in fact the reality was there was no disorder, it was a negative result. So a highly sensitive test has a lower probability of type 2 error or a lower probability of generating misses. A test with high specificity has a low probability of type 1 error or creating false alarms. So if we were evaluating an actual instrument here, we'd have to consider the consequences of false negatives and false positives in relation to the population we're working with and the disorder. And we have to weigh, depending on those, these circumstances, what's more important to us, specificity or sensitivity. Sometimes both are important. Sometimes we can't sacrifice either one. But then there are other instances where either sensitivity or specificity is more important. And even though we'd like the other value to also be high, if it's not as high, we could still have a practical application of the instrument. So again, ideally, both sensitivity and specificity would be high. And that's what we're looking at when we see the accuracy value. Ideally, we want an instrument to have a high percentage of accuracy. And this value is the percent generated by taking all the true findings and dividing by the total number of observations. I hope you found this video on understanding and calculating sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.